Hi everyone, thank you very much for joining us today for the day's Rural Outreach and Innovation Webinar, presented as part of the European Microfinance Platform. Our presenter today is Peter Hauser, a Senior Bank Advisor at BFC. He will be speaking to us about credit scoring, an essential subject to consider in regards to developmental finance. Peter, thank you very much for being here. Please begin whenever you're ready. Thank you. Uh, hello and welcome to BFC's webinar on credit scoring, uh, entitled Credit Scoring, Why and How to Get Started. This webinar is a general introduction to credit scoring for small business lending, and the webinar is targeted to lending institutions that don't have credit scoring now, but are thinking about implementing it in the future. Uh, we will talk about the requirements that must be met for you to get started with scoring, and what benefits you can hope to gain from it. Scoring is a powerful tool for risk assessment and productivity enhancement that is used by most of the world's large banks. Uh, I hope that as a result of this webinar, you will have a better understanding of why scoring is so popular and whether or not it is right for your organization. My name is Peter Hauser. I am BFC's lead scoring expert. Um, I will be presenting this webinar to you today. Uh, for those of you who are interested, you can find details about me on this slide. My email address is also given here, so please feel free to write to me and ask any questions after the webinar is finished. Scoring is a flexible tool that can be used for many different purposes. Uh, most commonly, scoring is used to evaluate a loan application based on the characteristics of the individual or business uh, who is applying for it. This is called application scoring. If we go clockwise around this circular diagram that you see on the slide, um, other uses of scoring include monitoring. So for example, which clients who already have received loans should be monitored more closely. Um, going further, we have scoring for collections. So for example, which delinquent clients need to be pursued more actively and aggressively to try to recover the loan. Um, going further, we have scoring for marketing. So this, uh, for example, might mean which type of marketing campaign will be the most likely to win business from a segment of clients. Um, further, we have scoring for fraud detection. So this helps us determine which loan applicants are most likely to be submitting fraudulent information as part of their application. And uh, going further, we have scoring for risk-based pricing. So this tells us to which clients we should be offering a discount uh, on their interest rate or on their fees, for example. In theory, you can use credit scoring anytime you need to make a decision that depends on a variety of different characteristics of the client, such as their age or the type of business they operate. Uh, instead of a person or a group of people making the decision, we let the scoring system make the decision, uh, or at least we let the scoring system advise us on the best possible decision. Uh, since we have limited time today, we will focus on application scoring since this is the most popular uh, type of of credit scoring used by financial institutions. Uh, there are two basic approaches to making a uh, scoring system. Uh, the first is called the statistical approach, um, and the second is called the expert approach. Um, the final uh, method that's, that you see on this slide is called hybrid scoring. Um, that's simply a combination of statistical and expert scoring. So first, let's talk about expert scoring. Uh, expert scoring, uh, which is also called judgmental scoring, means that a group of credit experts decide which variables are most important for determining the level of risk of giving a loan to an applicant, and they decide how many points to give for each variable. There's nothing really scientific about this process. It's just a group of people using their judgment to create a formula uh, that reflects their collective experience in lending to clients. Statistical scoring is quite different because the mathematical formula is determined through statistical analysis. Uh, although BFC helps clients develop expert scoring systems, we usually see this as an imperfect and temporary solution. We encourage our clients to build a database of information about their clients that can be used in the future to build a statistical scoring system. Uh, statistical scoring is more accurate because it's based on real historical data about your clients. It's a bit more difficult to do because you need to build a proper database first, but the extra effort is generally worth it. 
So we can also do hybrid scoring, which, as I said, is a combination of statistical and expert scoring. Um, this is done in cases where your institution does have a database, but that database only contains some of the variables that are important for the risk assessment. So maybe some of the information that you think is important is missing from the database. So in that case, you would use statistical methods to build a scorecard with the available data. Then you would add the missing variables using expert methods. Um, hybrid scoring, like expert scoring, should be considered only as a temporary solution as you build up a comprehensive database uh, that can be used in the future to develop a fully statistical scoring system. So let's talk in more detail about what you need to make a statistical scoring system. Um, the first requirement is that you need a sufficient number of bad loans. Uh, statistical scoring works by comparing good clients with bad clients. We define good and bad clients based on how they repaid their loans. So for example, uh, we might say that clients who were more than 30 days late at some point during the repayment of their loans, um, we would call them bad clients, while all other clients who, who had less than 30 days of delinquency, we would call them good clients. Uh, and this definition of good or bad would be defined individually for in each institution based on the characteristics of the institution and its clients. So we would need at least 500 of these bad loans to build a statistical scorecard uh, as an absolute minimum. And ideally, we would like to have at least 1,000 bad loans. Um, going further in the diagram, we also need staff who are trained to understand how the scoring system works uh, and to monitor and update it as needed. BFC generally recommends that scoring systems should be updated with new data uh, every year. Uh, finally, we need data to analyze. So this data should be uh, information about clients and the loans that they received. Ideally, this will include uh, all the information that was collected during the application process, such as information about the applicants and their families, information about the enterprises that they manage, and information about their credit history. Uh, we usually need this data going back at least two years. Um, many institutions uh, keep this type of information, but only in Excel files. It is possible to get application data from the Excel files, but of course, this, this process is much easier when the application data is stored in a centralized database. So these are the main requirements for credit scoring. Uh, one important aspect of credit scoring is that we want to develop a different scorecard for each of the segments that we serve. Um, sometimes building one scoring system isn't enough. So if we serve different groups of clients that have different risk pro profiles, each of these groups probably needs its own scoring system. For example, agricultural enterprises often have characteristics that affect their risk that are not relevant to non-agricultural enterprises. So for farmers, for example, risk may be affected by the types of crops that they grow, how much agricultural land that they own, um, whereas these factors are not important for a trading enterprise. So we need a different scorecard to evaluate farmers. Uh, other common scoring segments are based on the size of the enterprises. We usually need separate scorecards for micro enterprises compared to SMEs. Uh, if the lender is doing both group lending and individual lending, you probably need different scorecards for each. Um, some lenders have developed different scoring systems for new clients and repeat clients at their institution. Uh, this is especially useful in countries with no credit bureau or a very weak credit bureau because the, uh, for repeat clients, you can evaluate their credit history as one of the key risk factors. But for new clients, you may not have any credit history to, to analyze. So for this reason, you would build different scoring systems for the new clients and the repeat clients. Uh, the good news is that it's not difficult to make different scorecards for the different segments if you have a well-structured database. Um, the hard part, of course, is putting together the database in the first place. But once you have it, the actual process of making one or more scorecards is not complex. Uh, it's also important to keep in mind that you would need at least 500 ba uh, bad loans, preferably 1,000 bad loans, for each of your segments in order to make accurate scorecards. Uh, after you have identified for which segments you want to build your scoring system, you can start to analyze the data itself. Uh, this process starts by analyzing each variable in your database. So let's look at an example of how this is done. So here we're going to look at the variable uh, age of the client. 
Uh, so what we're going to do is we start by taking all the loans that we made in some previous year, let's say 2015. Uh, then we classify them as good or bad based on whether or not they had some serious delinquency. So let's say more than 30 days uh, that they were late. Uh, then I calculate the bad rate for each age group, which is simply the number of bad loans divided by the total number of loans in that age group. So let's imagine that I made 1,000 loans to clients in the 18 to 29 age group in 2015. Later, 84 of those loans became bad. So in this case, my bad rate is going to be 84 bad loans divided by 1,000 total loans, or 8.4%. And we can see the results in this table here. So for um, the age group 18 to 29, we have this bad rate of 8.4%. Uh, and I make the same calculation for age groups 30 to 59 and 60 plus. Uh, what we see here is that the bad rate decreases as the age of the client increases. So this means that older clients are paying better than younger clients. And we see this result for, uh, for many institutions in many different countries that older clients are paying better. Um, now, I don't want to suggest that you would find the same result in your organization. The point is that you're using uh, data from your own clients. You're analyzing your own clients, so um, you, you might get a different result. But the point is that you don't really know uh, what the bad rate is until you measure this. So scoring is part of that process of measuring and understanding what are the real risk factors. Uh, it's quite common for our credit committee members, for our staff members, to think that older clients are more risky. Um, but often this is not the case, and the only reason we can find out what the truth is is by doing this type of analysis. So I'd like to show you one more example uh, of an analysis of, a, of an individual variable. Uh, so here we're looking at um, new clients versus repeat clients. So this means clients who are borrowing for the first time in our institution or clients who, are taking, who have taken more than one loan in the past from our institution. Um, this is an example from a institution that, um, that we, uh, BFC analyzed uh, in the past. What we found is that the uh, repeat clients were actually paying worse than the new clients. Usually we would, we would expect the opposite result. We generally expect repeat clients to pay better than the new clients. But in this institution and in several ins other institutions where we, where we develop scoring systems, we found the opposite result. So this is, this is a bit surprising and we would like to find out why this is happening. We, we would like to find some kind of explanation for why repeat clients uh, are paying worse than new clients. So fortunately, our scoring database can help us to try to understand this. So what we do is we calculate the ratio of loan amount to the equity of the client's business. So the, the client's equity is, simple, is simply their total assets minus their liabilities. So what we find in this situation was that for new clients, the average ratio of loan amount to equity was 44%, whereas for repeat clients, it was much higher. It was 71%. So what does this mean? So this means that if um, a new client is getting a loan of, uh, uh, excuse me, if a new client has a uh, equity of $1,000, then on average, they're getting a loan amount of $440, whereas for repeat clients, if they have $1,000 of equity, on average, they're getting $710 as the loan amount. So it means that repeat clients getting much, much larger loan amounts relative to the size of their business. So this means that the institution was being too aggressive in lending to repeat clients. They're giving very small amounts to new clients, but giving much bigger amounts to repeat clients. And as a result, we see this, we see this result that the repeat clients are actually paying worse than the new clients. So again, I don't want to suggest that this is what's happening in your institution. In your institution, the situation may be, may be completely different. But um, as a result of doing the scoring analysis, we often find very surprising results that we wouldn't have expected and that we wouldn't know unless we actually do this, this analysis. So uh, moving forward, I'd like to summarize the benefits of credit scoring. Um, one of the interesting things about scoring is that you can get some of the benefits of scoring even before you actually make the scorecard. So as we saw in the previous slides, uh, we start the process of developing a scoring system by analyzing individual variables. Uh, simply analyzing these variables gives us important information that we can use to educate our staff. So for example, by teaching our staff that older clients are paying 
the best. Um, or sometimes we can use that information to improve our credit policies. So for, for example, we could change the rules um, for how we determine how much money a repeat client can get relative to their equity. So that, would, that type of uh, changing of policies would help the institution that we saw in the previous slide. Uh, when we have the scorecard, we can now go one step further and introduce, um, sorry, uh, so um, all, of this, all of this is taking place before we actually build the scorecard. So of course, building the scorecard is even better. Um, building the scorecard is the most accurate solution for predicting risk because it takes all of those individual variables and combines them into a single formula. So when we have the scorecard, we can now go one step further and introduce automatic decisions. This means that the scoring system makes a decision with no credit committee or underwriter. Uh, this is, of course, faster and more efficient than the traditional credit cycle because we're skipping the credit committee, saving us some time. Uh, the automatic decisions are optional. Of course, you can just use scoring for the risk assessment, uh, but the combination of the risk accuracy plus the speed of automatic decisions is what makes so, uh, scoring so compelling for many lending institutions. Although the benefits of scoring can be very powerful, many institutions avoid scoring due to the costs and complexity of implementing a loan processing system, which would allow them to build a database of, of, of client applications. Um, however, it's worth pointing out that the collection of application data in a centralized system can bring more benefits than just the development of credit scoring. For example, um, application data can also be used for market and customer relationship management purposes, such as segmentation, of clients and uh, calculation of the dropout rate for different types of clients. Uh, many institutions, financial institutions, are required to report social performance indicators, uh, such as the proportion of clients they reach uh, that have a very low income. Many of these indicators can be produced automatically using the same data that is used for scoring purposes. Overall, we find that scoring data covers at least 90% of the data that is required for a variety of marketing and social performance applications. Therefore, we strongly encourage institutions to make the necessary investments in IT uh, to make this possible. So this was a short introduction to the basic approach and benefits of scoring. Uh, I hope you found this useful. Thank you.